who's here. You're going to start now? Yeah. It's we're starting on time. Yes, we are. It's 5 o'clock. We're starting on time. Um, welcome to the Northampton Committee on Disabilities. Um, this meeting is being videotaped and audio taped. And um, now we will have an introduction of members. And say your name. Do we know who's here? I'll start. Kathy Shaughnessy. City Councilor Marianne Labarge, liaison. Jim Nash. Dave Fortin. <laughs> Ruth McGrath. And Tori Eklund, chair. Um, Can I just mention something? Sure. Uh, though we have it on the agenda, um, we are now called Commission on Disability. Thank you, Patty. I wasn't sure if that was official yet. Yeah, it's official. It's official. The night did. that we voted on this, the two readings, that it was sent to Mary Medora, that it was approved on both readings that night, and then it was sent as an ordinance um, to Wendy Mosna, and it's placed in the ordinance book. Excellent. Okay. Well, I so was. So we are a commission right now. Awesome. I wasn't. I wasn't sure, so I didn't want to say it yeah. prematurely. It's okay. <laughs> and what's nice is we still are the COD. Yes, we are. Good. So some things change and some things stay the same. Okay. So now um, we will approve the minutes for February nineteenth. I have a few extra copies if anybody needs one. Yeah, I need one. I love mine at home. Okay, with it. Yeah, I need one. You got your minutes, Gay? Yeah, I got this. Good for you, Gay. You get two, another point. Thank Jim? You. If I could have a copy, that'd be great. I, have a copy, I already have a copy of the agenda. Yeah. Thank you. So, you have these yes, minutes um, since. Uh, oh, I didn't read the first reading. Oh, did you? Do you want to read them and then I'll read them? Because we're members now. Yeah. No, I think you are. Uh, I'm a, you are. You're a member. Patty's not. Right. And I'm still not. Right, because you're still in that bottom section. Right. She's what? She, she's um, one of those associate members, which doesn't really exist, but she that's where she is. Right. I'm a limbo right now. <laughs> mm. Yeah, but we've approved this. We're supposed to go right into moving people. Right, but so mm -hmm. that's something that needs to get worked on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you can't keep going on like this. No, so it can be done shortly. You're so. a regular member, Jim. You're all set. Gay's all set. Tori, you're all set. Mm -hmm. Mary Ann is now a member um, based on the new ordinance, mm -hmm. not just a mm -hmm. representative. Hi, Sam. Um, are people still reading and reviewing? Or? Yeah, I have a suggestion. Why don't we Somebody come make... back to this as people are reviewing it, the, the minutes, and we can start with the other parts of the meeting. And... Well, we've read it. Yeah, yeah I can read it. Okay. Did you read it or not? I, in the, I think the video came out. Well, I actually, read it. <laughs> one, two, three, four. Do we you not don't, have you a don't have a forum, so you can't vote on the minutes. Okay. Oh. So we're going to have to save it for next meeting anyway. That's right. So right. we'll have lots of time to read. <laughs> okay. So much appreciated. In that case, what's the, what's the point, huh? Right. Yeah. In that case, um, we will move to public comment. Are there any members of the public here who would like to comment? Sam, you have anything you want? I'm all set. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank um, you. Sure. So our, I guess our guest speaker isn't here yet. So maybe we should. Um, She'll be here. Move on. I just talked with her last. Week. Okay. So maybe we could do some of these other updates while we're um, while we're waiting. Yep. Yeah. Um, so the next agenda item is um, an update on the new mm -hmm. ordinance, Patty. Okay. So as Mary and I already mentioned a few items about that. Um, that is the Commission on Disability is our new name, um, and that's by ordinance. And now we're. Um, we're in compliance with what the um, state uh, statute is, so so that's good. Um, and one of the questions that Miriam brought up, and actually, this is how everything actually got started mm -hmm. about um, membership, was um, asking about filling positions, mm -hmm. and then it was the more it got looked at, it was it wasn't in compliance with state. So um, there are nine members. 
we have nine, previously we had nine voting members and we could have five associate members. The associate members are not according to state statute. So that is part of what has been eliminated mm -hmm. in terms of our ordinance. But members are still here. And so as Miriam was saying that there are a few position openings in the nine. And so I know a number of people have applied to the mayor's office. So there's applications there. And now it's um, to get those uh, vacancies filled. And part of the new ordinance is, and again, it's by state statute that um, there is a um, elected official um, as a voting member, which Marianne um, Councilor Labarge is a, is a voting member now. Mm -hmm. I'm a liaison still. I am not a voting member. Um, so there are two vacancies, I believe. On, yeah. On the, um, no, there's only one um, because uh, one of the vacancies is taken by Marianne. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Cynthia's is still a question to me because um, she was she had not reapplied. Now I I don't know. I assume she has reapplied, but I don't know if she's been reinstated. I don't well, know the that, status of hers. The mayor does on his own route. Right. And then when he decides who he's going to select. He then sends it to city council, and then we make a recommendation of sending it to appointments and evaluations. We then notify that applicant when our meeting is going to be, what time that person can make it to be interviewed, and we make a decision there with a recommendation or not a recommendation to full city council. All right. So on our membership roster now, she's listed as a member. Right. Do I count that as a member or as a vacancy? This is what I've asked Patty before, but her hands are tied because her application is still inside the mayor's right. office. Right. As, as far as I guess you could look at it, and again, um, you know, she Cynthia hasn't been reappointed. I, I, I'm assuming, and maybe that's a bad yeah. assumption, that Gay, you were reappointed. I remember yeah. that. Tori, I know you were reappointed. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Mm -hmm. Jim, you were reappointed, um, I believe. No, yeah. he's on the waiting list. I thought he was reappointed. <laughs> um, so well, I can't. Nobody's voting today, anyway. So I know. So maybe it's like finding out from Mary Madura who who actually mm -hmm. has been reappointed. So no, that you have to go through the mayor's office. Well, um, you go through the mayor's office and go through one patty. Okay, good. Oh, you're, that's, oh, that's right. Where all Mary, the Mary's one who are. sends the mm -hmm. official. And then what? Whoever the yeah. mayor decides. He sends that applicant's application to Mary Medor to us city councilors okay. for sending it out. That's the procedure. Yeah. Yeah. I know I am. No, I know you're right. <laughs> Mary, when I'm thinking Mary Medor is the one who sends out it all of the um, documents that tells um, me who was um, appointed right. or reappointed. And, and what we actually look at, how many times a person, okay, no matter if you're on a committee or not, we're being very thorough about every committee that mm -hmm. applicants and volunteers are on. And we look at how many meetings they miss, okay? Are they getting along with the committee members? And are they working together with them? Okay. And so we look at that. So for now, I'll just leave her listed and not touch it until I hear differently. Right, because okay. usually members serve until they are replaced. So. And, and so that's all part of what mm -hmm. still is happening within I can our call, commission. I'll call Lynn tomorrow and talk yeah. to her at 8.30. Yeah. Okay. And see where's the movement. How many applicants? I mean, how many do you need? Mm -hmm. How yeah. many more on for uh, the nine members? Mm -hmm. well, I, think, I think it's only one. It's okay. one plus whatever happens to Cynthia. Yeah. So oh, there, there, potentially there could be two. Okay. Okay. Yes. Hey, how you doing? I'm well, thank Come you. Come on here. Okay. So, uh, so do you want me to do that, Miriam? I can call in tomorrow. Uh, that's fine. Okay. Okay. I think I'm still going to do it because I want to know. Okay, so standing. we'll we'll know better. And I just recall last um, year in the fall, um, I had emailed everybody or sent a letter to everybody mm -hmm. who needed to get reappointed and what they needed to do, yep. including the application. So um, at this point, whatever we're talking about, like who is a member, who isn't, the mayor's office would be best to address that. Right. Okay. Didn't you just talk? You told me to somebody in the mayor's office about applicants. Yeah, there were a number of people who have applied. 
for the Committee on for, Disabilities. For, yes, right, for our, our new committee. Because I know so we still there for have a while. that attorney. Yeah. So What's I'm, his name? Um, um, okay, what Matt is his Wilson. name? Uh, the one who came to the came to the meeting. Yeah, yeah, he I've, got yeah. I've got it here. I've got it here. James. Huh? James Winston. Winston. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, I used Winston. to have a drugstore. Yeah. No, I have a question. What about? Now, I'm an associate member, and I didn't have to reapply because I'm good for I forget how long now. Do I still have to reapply to become a regular member? Should I, even though my associate membership was still good for another? I forget right, how but long. there is no such thing as an associate no. member, so right. I think so, you probably should apply now. I would say yeah, yes. I, I would agree with Tori. Yeah, that right. Is. You should reapply. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments about this topic? Um, if not, I think our guest speaker has arrived. Oh. <laughs> On the membership, let me just explain the membership. Said commission shall consist of nine members appointed by the mayor and subject to confirmation by the City Council. A majority of Commission members shall consist of people with disabilities. One member shall be a member of the immediate family of a person with a disability, and one member of said Commission shall be a member of the City Council recommended by the City Council President. The City's American Disability Act ADA coordinator shall be the liaison to the Commission. Okay. The duties such commissions shall, one, research local problems of people with disabilities, two, advise and assist municipal officials and employees in ensuring compliance with state and federal laws and regulations that affect people with disabilities, three, coordinate or carry out programs designed to meet the problems of people with disabilities in coordination with programs of the Massachusetts Office on Disability. Four, review and make recommendations about policies, procedures, services, activities, and facilities of departments, board, and agencies of the City of Northampton as they affect people with disabilities. Five, Provide information, referrals, guidance, and technical assistance to individuals, public agencies, businesses, and organizations, and all matters pertaining to disabilities. Six, coordinate activities of local groups organized for similar purposes. Well, that's it, you know, and there should be a commission on disability established mm -hmm. in pursuit to the uh, Mass Journal Laws, Chapter 48J in the city of Northampton. And it was approved. We did the first reading on a Thursday night, and I brought it forth to do a second reading on it, and it was mm -hmm. voted in. So we are now a commission on disability. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And there also is how you do the terms. Mm -hmm. The terms of the first members of such commission shall be for one, two, or three years, mm -hmm. and so arranged that the term of one-third of the members expires each year, mm -hmm. and their successor shall be appointed for terms of three years each. Any member of such commission may, after a public hearing, if so requested, be removed for cause by the appointing authority. A vacancy occurring other than by expiration of a term shall be filled for the unexpired term in the same matter as an original appointment. Okay. The chairperson and other officers shall be chosen by a majority vote of said commission members. The commission select a chair and a vice chair from within its ranks and fill such other offices as it may be determined. Compensation. Members of said commission shall serve without compensation. Mm -hmm. Meetings. Said commission shall keep records of its meetings and actions and shall file an annual report with the city of Northampton and shall have at least 10 meetings annually. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. All right. 
So is our, our guest speaker here? She is here. Yeah. Yes. This is Tori Thank you for coming. Hi. 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 So nice to meet Deborah, you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> um, likewise. Well, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, I don't know that I'm, I'm actually um, would be considered a speaker, but I was. Um, <laughs> you are. Um, You're a special guest. <laughs> You're I, a special I was. Guest. I was <laughs> <laughs> um, I, honored, honored to be invited here tonight by uh, Councilman Marion Labarge um, to speak to. Um, audio enhancements for films. Yes. Um, my name is Deborah J. Anthony. Um, I'm the executive director. And thank you, Deborah, for being here. Thank, thank you for yes. having me. Um, and as you well know, um, about seven years ago, the Academy had changed its model from a first-run movie house um, due to some changes. And this really will segue into some of the uh, challenges that we have with um, assisted listening devices. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in the 1980s, distribution companies that, that hold the license to films began to require that... Whoops, I'm sorry. That's okay, thank you. Let <laughs> <laughs> me just turn that off. Um, Who has that ring? Me. That's, that's <laughs> one each one. <laughs> <laughs> it better be important. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I, I turn it off. Thank you. I don't. I rarely get phone, okay. phone calls. That's okay. Um, it happens to us all. Um, so um, approximately 20 years ago, uh, on a national level, the um, film industry, the distributors in particular, started to um, ask venues to hold films over. And so therefore, you know, so they, therefore, the, the onset of multiplexes were, um, were initiated so that uh, venues could then take films they were expected to hold for a month and put them into smaller screens. That's what changed it, it was the distribution, the, the people that owned the films, mm -hmm. they wanted to, to hold the films over to get as much money out of the films as possible. And that's the reason the Academy um, actually started to lose money is because we had one screen. And so mm -hmm. if they asked us to hold a film over for a month or two, then everybody's seen the film. Right. And yeah. other, other uh, multiplexes, multiplexes and other venues that had more than one screen uh, were showing more current films. So that was the conundrum, you know, that had happened on a national level. Many um, venues, such as the Academy, either flipped to a performing arts space or um, actually built megaplexes out of their venues. So it, it was a it was a different decision. Um, I had come from another venue um, just north of here at the Shea Theater, which was also a movie house. And uh, in 1980, they flipped to a performing arts center. So the the lag at the academy caused further financial damage. So because it was inevitable. Mm -hmm. So there are similar circumstances that are going on right now mm -hmm. um, that prohibit um, access. Um, to venues again, the academy. Just to back up a little bit, because because we could no longer um, show films in the same way that we had during the 40s, 50s, and 60s and 70s, um, we're now a performing arts space. So we do not um, show films. The only time we throw we show at this point three films a year. And that's in January. We have what we call the Meet Me at the Movies series on Sundays. Mm -hmm. And we usually try to pick a theme. I think one year we did, um, uh, last year we did rock and roll uh, concerts um, that were refurbished films from the mm -hmm. 1960s. Um, we did the Coen Brothers another year, and I think they did some musicals. So there's always a theme that we carry through in, in January. Um, we are working with a company called Spectacast, um, so we have a, um, a limited selection. And the reason we choose Spectacast is because um, they're a company that has access to the Bryn Mawr films, mm -hmm. and 
uh, they're not first run, but they are also are not a risk because we do not show films on a regular basis. We do not have access to movie listings. So we have no access to the advertising at all. And so, and even if we were to advertise, we would then would lose money. Spectacast allows us to show films to keep the theater open, keep staff members employed, and then they just take a cut. They take 50% of the gate. So if 50 people show up and we're charging 50 five dollars is basically what we're charging mm -hmm. you know it's they get 125 we get 125 so basically we pay for two staff members to be there mm -hmm. and <laughs> etc mm -hmm. so that's the model that we're working with but we don't lose mm -hmm. and and then but we're primarily again now a performing arts space open mm -hmm. may, used mainly by community groups in this area um, so they're mainly rentals mm -hmm. that are that are coming in right now um, in regards to film, it is, um, uh, Marianne Labar specifically asked about um, assisted learning to listening devices for films. Mm -hmm. um, I did get some information from our technical director. Um, the one con the one sh challenge is the um, for subtitles is the cost. Right now, many venues, similarly to um, the distribution quagmire that venues were caught in. Right now we're in another transition of mm -hmm. going digital. So you might have heard that venues now are do going digital. If you go on Kickstarter, you see a lot of venues that are now trying these Kickstarter campaigns mm -hmm. to purchase um, the new digital DCI JPEG 2000, which is $150,000. So we show three films. We rarely show, you know, I don't know how long we're going to continue with that because of the challenges of showing films these days. Um, but you um, have to have a compliant cinema system to have access to the subtitles. Mm -hmm. Our projector, our brand new mm -hmm. HD projector, has does not have access. So we'd have to get a new projector and we'd have to get this new DC digital DCI JPEG 2000. Yeah, I think the closed captioning since 2003 is there, but if you don't have the equipment to show it. That's right, you have no access. Yeah. You do if you're a house, you know, a home, but we're a commercial, so we have to go through the, uh, again, the distributors. There's this yeah. huge battle that's, that's going on right now between um, the public mm -hmm. <laughs> and access and streaming mm -hmm. and the distributors. Mm. Um, and, if, and we believe, at least my technical director believes, that eventually the distributors are going to lose out. And so mm. what they're doing is trying to fight for every nickel and dime that they can at this point because eventually they are going to be taken out, just like the, you know, the publishers and, you know, just like it has been with books and music, people okay. downloading, okay? So this is happening with film right now, and so it, it, it becomes cost prohibitive. There's another older system that is also not only cost prohibitive, but also uh, would impact our venue historically. We probably would not have the, the permission to do this, and that is to get this um, infrared LED screen. It's about the size of our marquee that you'd have to hang in front of the balcony. So it's this huge device. And again, um, we, uh, for both the reasons of cost for three, running three films, and this also provides, allows access to the subtitles. So um, because we are um, a media-based media source, because we don't have access because it's in the media, and we can't access unless we have the equipment, which is cost prohibitive for the academy because we are no longer a first-run movie house mm -hmm. because we're a one screen <coughs> movie house. So we just, you know, we're very historic at this point, even, you know, in regards to um, the playing of first-run films. Could I ask what you is something? what is potential? Okay. <laughs> yeah. What is What is what is a potential um, and and feasible? Um, uh, system would be um, the audio headsets. Yes. So um, the audio headsets, um, awesome. again, because, and I'm, I'm going to just give a little bit of mm -hmm. history to the academy too, so you can show you where we're at. Because when I first came into the academy and we were moving into a performing arts venue, we had no equipment. Exactly. No equipment. And we're still, we, we are still. Um, bare bones, so we don't have a full, full, e fully equipped system. So we don't even have a fully equipped 
system for um, um, non-impaired because we don't have a central speaker mm -hmm. um, yet. It's a thousand dollars, and um, there's other equipment that's ahead of that that we that we need that's on our list. And I sh probably should have brought our technical list of things that we really need to have mm -hmm. to just serve the people that are coming in mm -hmm. um, and meet their needs. Um, so we do st still need a central um, speaker. Uh, we have the we did purchase new left and right speakers. <laughs> we don't have that central sound um, speaker yet, um, and then the which is a thousand, and then to have six. However, new equipment, six headsets, and the um, the transmitters and the receivers is only a cost of two thousand dollars. Which again, we don't have we don't have that kind of funding and I don't know a funding source so that's um, to have a complete system for our our sound system for our, our film for these three films that we're showing <laughs> is three thousand um, dollars I, I was just gonna say um, I think that answers the, the mm -hmm. audio audio headsets also are, are really great for oh. um, I don't know how I don't know how this would be implemented before um, for live performances like I've been in other areas where they've had those for like theater performances and live performances because even with you know concerts and shows, there's mm -hmm. um, there's stuff that you miss if mm -hmm. you can't see like you miss the the choreography or you miss like oh they all just you know stood up and waved mm -hmm. or high fived or you know what I mean like there's still things that you miss. Um, there. So I don't know. That's just a thought. okay. Well, I can. I actually. That's that's. A, a wonderful um, thought, and it's, it, and it's a good question to put out there. Um, what the the obstacle to that would be that the academy is not putting these um, performances on, so the people that are coming in are responsible oh, for the costs. Gotcha. So everyone that's coming mm -hmm. in um, would have to hire somebody to do all of these things. Right. So whether or not, um, and and I'm going to say because the economy has been lagging mm -hmm. um, and the arts are, are, are impacted because people yeah. aren't coming out. Audience mm -hmm. numbers have dropped by 33% mm. regionally um, and so the renters that are coming in right now are cutting everything down to the bare bones. I mean, we still have activity. We have a lot of activity, mm -hmm. but it's very small. They're smaller shows right. uh, with very tight budgets. Mm -hmm. And um, we actually subsidize. I mean, a lot of the money that we go out, you know, our, our individual mm -hmm. campaigns subsidize 50% for the community groups to come in. So if somebody's paying us $720 to come in for a six hour rental, mm -hmm. it really is actually $1,440 to come in. And we're making up the difference by going mm -hmm. out and, wow. and and asking for funds. So we can't... Um, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very... Um, <laughs> Well, you know, lean I, mean machine here. Yeah. Well, well, and there was no way so, What about CPA money? I mean, you can get recreational. We right now we have CPA funds that are already earmarked for seats. Mm -hmm. the seats that are upstairs mm -hmm. are the the building itself. Uh, <laughs> um, the building itself it has not been attended to for so many mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. That um, we have a back, we have a backlog of of maintenance and repair items. Now, since I've been there in the last five years, we've been chipping away at it. For instance, um, we've we put in a nearly, I think, uh, five hundred thousand dollars since I've been there, and that is mainly in replacing the exterior doors and windows. When I first came in here, came into the academy. The, um, the doors would blow up one on their own. So in the morning, I could come in and the doors would be wide open upstairs because they were in such bad shape. And because they, they um, were letting wind in and rain, etc., there's damage to the plaster, there's water damage. We have pla um, oh, I should just bring you this <laughs> picture. We have plaster that's hanging down um, because wow. Because of damaged and and one of the balconies, the the joists have been damaged from the rain coming in through the door. So all the doors, exterior doors, had to be replaced, which was extremely expensive. And the windows, 
We had um, similar <coughs> issues. Um, prior to coming to the Academy, there was a, a larger um, a capital project that replaced the, um, the roof, the slate roof over the uh, um, auditorium, yeah. um, as well as pointing the building and um, we that yes, that was a two million dollar project. That was t 13 years ago. Then when I came in, we replaced, we continued to work on the envelope of the building. Mm -hmm. And um, so we replaced the doors and the windows and we added the marquee because when the marquee came down, mm -hmm. it was in such <coughs> bad repair, they could not repair it and put it back up. Mm -hmm. So we have now, uh, a, a new marquee that came through both CPA funds and state um, mm -hmm. cultural facilities funds. What about the fire state? And now, okay, so now. <laughs> I know, because we, we think, I know, so we <laughs> think we're, okay, now we're getting a little ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, now that we um, had completed almost all of the envelope of the building, mm -hmm. with the exception of the roof over the stage. So when I'm coming in, we have all of this electrical work. We ended up getting a grant to replace the lighting mm. to help um, on stage through a federal energy grant uh, when we were part of the citywide energy audits. So um, we received funding for that to, to get some new LED lamps. And so now we've been attending to some of the energy mm -hmm. um, conservation um, mm -hmm. needs. And uh, who were you working with, Mason on that? Yes, Chris Mason was who we were working with, um, and Central Services. Okay. Um, so we had those replaced, but what was happening was all this electrical work in the grid, you know, hanging from these battens, but with rain going mm. through huh. all that time. Yeah. <laughs> because the roof uh, um, over the stage mm. hadn't been replaced. Mm. Oh. So we need to replace the roof. Well, Chris Mason came over and I was explaining to him how it was wonderful, how we had, through the city project, through the energy um, mm -hmm. grants they received from the um, from federal stimulus funds, um, we were able to take out our oil um, burner mm -hmm. and put in natural gas and then they put in some blowers um, underneath some of the seats. Okay. So we could, right, which helped immensely. Yeah. People were very, very cold. Cut the cost down. Too. Yes. So, and cut the cost down. Mm -hmm. So I was explaining to him that it was, you know, it's been very helpful, except for on stage. It was, um, off, it was continued to be a little bit drafty because he goes, well, um, he goes, you have all these heaters. Yes, well, that's true. On stage, we have a different system, the old system, the baseboard heaters all around on the stage. And I said, yes, they work very well, except they all, all the heat goes up. Mm -hmm. It's 50 feet up there. And so mm -hmm. all this heat goes up. And mm -hmm. he goes, well, don't you have insulation? I said, no, we don't have insulation. So, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so he was able to um, mm -hmm. get another grant through federal federal um, stimulus and the energy energy grants to get mm -hmm. to uh, allow us to get insulation, and we uh, have are piggybacking that onto mm -hmm. CPA funds mm -hmm. um, to have the re roof replaced. Mm -hmm. All right, so... So it um, sounds like you have a lot of other stuff going on And right then, now. in addition to that, upstairs we have seats that are from 1947. So if they fail, we cannot replace the parts. Oh. We have seats downstairs that are used 1960s. Mm. And this, we are experiencing the same challenges. If something fails on them, we cannot find the part to fix them. So um, we put in a CPA grant, and we were awarded um, $265,000 from the Community Preservation um, um, Act uh, Committee, and thank you, thank you to the City Council for <laughs> approving that. Uh, 20000 of which we've already spent on the engineering and design. Mm -hmm. So that is completely completed. We're shovel ready for that. And now we're just waiting on to see if we're going to be awarded the state funds. And mm -hmm. we have been just, you know, well, really... I think if you're so, talking about 1947 on the upstairs, 1960 downstairs, and it is a city building, okay, it is our responsibility to make sure that any type of repairs or anything that needs to be done mm -hmm. 
okay, needs to be done. Right. And there have been some safety issues, you know, with the catwalk that Central yes. Services has been uh -huh. taking care mm -hmm. of, coming in and replacing, you know, some equipment. The, the also this year, through another grant that Central Services was able to get, we were able to replace all of our faucets. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, because they were leaking, we had leaks, and we had toilets that were very old, so... Um, they are keeping the urinals in the men's room downstairs. They're very old, and they're they're part of the history classic. of the building. So they're classic <laughs> urinals. So there you go. <laughs> so right now, and then of course we have so our CPA monies that we received are earmarked um, right now for the seats to have the seats replaced to allow for some handicap seating because we don't even have handicap seating wow. downstairs. So we want to. You know, upgrade that so we have handicapped seating downstairs. Um, replace all the seats to repair the plaster that's falling apart, and to um, replace the roof and, and then provide insulation again to help us help with um, heating costs, heating and cooling costs. Um, so we, we because we haven't received the state funds yet, we haven't been able to get the pro move the project mm -hmm. forward. Yeah. Um, and so we can't apply for more CPA funds. Right. Um, once the CPA, the, this round, mm -hmm. we're hoping to apply for a smaller round because we do need <coughs> lighting. Um, and part of the, um, you know, part of that is lighting the aisles. We don't have any aisles mm -hmm. for... It's dark. It's dark in there. You, we, there, is, there had been mm -hmm. a chandelier. Mm -hmm. uh, originally in the theater, so what I'm hoping um, to do is apply for a um, a public um, public art grant through ANIFA, which is the New England Foundation for the Arts mm -hmm. grant, for uh, to have a local artisan mm -hmm. um, uh, create a, a chandelier mm -hmm. um, for that space. I so. talked with um, Jamie Perrin from the district attorney's office. Mm -hmm. In regards, she's coming next month. In regards to how this commission is trying to get grants, okay, because we need to move forward mm -hmm. on certain projects that we would like to do, and I think with her connection will <coughs> help us out very much. But I have a question about what Patty said about the CPA and recreation. If we are a theater, they're saying mm -hmm. the Academy of Music, mm -hmm. and hearing that now we are performing art space, correct? Mm -hmm. And what would you say, because the performing arts comes in, and they book, mm -hmm. and it's at $1,400 for each time that somebody comes into the it, it depends on the it depends on if they're coming in for six hours, twelve hours, mm -hmm. or, or oh, okay. one. So the charges okay. are different. Yeah. Okay. Per, but my question use. is, through the CPA, I find because there is a mass general law on people with disabilities that that should be considered going in through a CPA also. Yeah. I mean, you're supposed to abide by. The mass general laws on the committee on disabilities. Well, if, you know what? If this committee, um, if this committee could apply to the CPA for funds for access for mm -hmm. performance, that whereby not just the academy but any other um, any other performance in the city of Northampton well, would I'm come to it being a city building. Oh, okay? oh, exactly. Oh, okay. And if we have people who come to the performing arts, like Tori was saying, mm -hmm. visually is a problem. Also, hearing is a problem. Right. So people are going to come there when somebody is doing performing arts, but there is not anything there for people with that disability, either one of them. Right. Okay, visually impaired or either hearing impaired. So... With the mass laws, general laws, I have concerned of it being a city building and we're not abiding by the mass general laws. That's my mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm going to check that out. Yeah. Somehow if, if to there see could how we be... can get a grant. And I know we've been talking mm -hmm. with Joe Cook, our uh, procurement officer, mm -hmm. in regards of somebody helping us out with grants, and that's why with Jamie, parent mm -hmm. coming in, 
I know she'll put us in the right direction and with the right people. So with having already applied and received two CPA grants, mm -hmm. that doesn't include that you can't apply again for no, something else. Right. No, so, but yes, we can. But we can go but we, together. We, we, we can have the Academy of Music and the, and the Commission on Disability that can apply it through the CPA. That can be done. We're, we're a joint team. Can the city apply, though, through... Well, they're doing work in um, City Hall. They're right. putting um, mm -hmm. historic buildings. Exactly. Well, right. my, co my concern is, my concern is it's, it's more strategy than, <laughs> than it would be, um, can the Academy do this? Of course it could, but my concern would be that if the Academy went up before the CPA board again, asking for more money again when we haven't spent down the monies that we have, then... then but that is something that you're in the process of doing. Right. Yes, so but it won't, this project you're won't be... for the state But to this is for a different project. This would be for a different purpose. Right. Yes, but I don't believe that they would, um, they would approve of a, more funding. <laughs> right, when you say, yeah, yeah, you don't want to look greedy. Well, when we already have, yeah. It, but it well, could be worth a try. Second. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I, well, I, I'm, not the, I'm not the moderator. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Jim. You want to say something? It's okay, Tori. So, um, that we had been looking into purchasing some electronic equipment for this meeting, yeah. and that I think we dabbled with it, and I think that we it was kind of mixed as to whether or not it was really effective for us. I don't know what we're looking at. Yeah, it, actually, we have a meeting tomorrow exactly. morning. Mm. So we're actually going to move forward with that? We are, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Ruth and... Uh, this is a large. different type of system, and we're working with Alan with very, very closely. Okay. So, but we, we're we purchasing that with funds from the parking. Handicap parking. So we have this, this, this income source coming in. So what if we were to consider that, you know, after this purchase, that we also say, all right, we have a, a city facility that could use around $2,000 for some sort of headset um, equipment. For the academy? I don't think... No, I, I don't can't. think it would work. I don't think we can use no. this money for we that. Can't. Why not? I mean, it's for a city building for people to access. Just like what Marianne was saying, that it's for the public to use a city building, and that um, we can check it out. Yeah. Right now and see what. I mean, it, it it would be. I, I think. Now I'm not sure these headsets can be used for for for, for, right. for stage shows. I don't know the technology for right. that. See, I'm, I'm assuming that for stage performances, you might need to, um, all of the shows would have to hire a union hand to run a sound there system. There you go. I was just going to talk about that. But a lot of people come, when they're coming in to perform, will, when they do that, you know, hire somebody to do sound, if there were a system. They don't always hire somebody to do sound. They bring in their own sound equipment sometimes. So okay. then you're going to ask for somebody because if it's going to be academy equipment, the union, so it's going to be an extra hand. So who's going? To, well, we can't really require our mm -hmm. renters to mm -hmm. hire the extra hand. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking the there unions. might be some sort of opportunity here in terms of the funds that we have come in. Right. That we we might be able to do. You know, if it were to a city council meeting or some committee or this, you know. The academy. Which so you're actually talking because a union hand is uh, uh, required for hour call. So for every show at the academy, it's going to be a four hour call, which is going to cost approximately a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about uh, a project, you know, not including the equipment, just the labor alone, you know, over five thousand dollars. I have a, a year. suggestion for that. Um, it may be the kind of thing where um, you might not have it for every performance. It might be the kind of thing where if someone needed that service, they might want, they might need to request it ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So if no one who needed the service was planning to come to a particular performance, then the money wouldn't have to be laid out for that particular show. It could be like, you know, an, it could be offered upon request. That right. might cut down on the right. cost. We could go to CPA. As the commission, okay, right. and tell them 
exactly about the mass general laws and the importance mm -hmm. okay of people being visually impaired and you know well, it's, it's, I, something's got to be done well even before you go we there you got ourselves there. Yeah. and we could be a source of matching funds so I, just, that's, I, just, yeah. I just want to say that as a person with a visual visual disability oh my gosh it makes a huge difference sure i've does. had um I've rented videos that have audio description. It is amazing mm -hmm. the the level of detail and the level of knowledge and feeling that you get from that. Now, this how do you get an audio right? description? So somebody actually sits and, and, and watches and describes um, it? Or? Well, that's what happens most of the time because most places don't have it. But um, what, what happens when you do have it is that... Um, it's somehow built into this. What I'm talking about was on a DVD, mm -hmm. and it was somehow built into it so that when there's pauses, like when there's no dialogue or no sound, there's someone describing, there's someone saying, Oh, so and so just walked into the room and fell on the floor, or, you know, describes what's happening so that, um, or describes the scenery so that you get mm -hmm. a sense of what's going on. It, I, I have to say, it is like night and day unbelievable difference in the enjoyment so so it would be I'm gonna yeah I'm yeah. gonna need to um, go back to my technical director and um, and find out um, how that works and what what would that mm -hmm. mean for mm -hmm. labor and you know can you actually call somebody last minute you well we and as policy the, we what we try to do is give all employees a two-week notice mm -hmm. you know for staffing mm -hmm. um so right so if you wanted i mean there could be a reasonable parameter where if you want to request this service you have to request it within a reasonable time frame. So, like, if I wanted to use it and I wanted so to come to the show, so it's a show description. It's a show description. It's an uh, it's um audio description. It's audio description. Um, if you for ever for staged performances, okay. right? For sh um, and if if you ever want to um get an experience of of just what it's like, so that's if, for dance on theater. a DVD. Um, <laughs> it's like you the, the um National Library Service, the Library of Congress for the Blind, they have them. So okay. just if you ever want to see. But you know, we appreciate you coming and just okay. being mindful wow. of this and working with wow. us on this. Um, even if it can't be done instantaneously, just I think just having it explore in your the mind options, yes. and exploring the options and working with us is, is really appreciated. Look at how long it took us, Dorothy, just to do the braille menus and also the large menus in the city of North Northampton. Mm -hmm. Working with the businesses, the restaurants. Yeah. It took us a year, but it's but it's in it was place. successful. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So um, so this can be too, even if it's not instantaneous. Just your willingness to, you know, care about it mm -hmm. and explore the options is is wonderful. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, um, I what I'm hearing my homework is going to be. Um, for now and the next time that we meet mm -hmm. is to get information on audio description for stage performances that include things like dance and theater and multimedia. Mm -hmm. um, um, not music, correct? Not if if music is the main event. If it's a classical if, concert. If it's, if it's a classical concert, no. Okay. If it's like um, performances where there's like choreography or there's mm -hmm. some other that's element to it. Okay. Yeah. Like opera so, where they tell a story with music, something like that. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. once I figure that out and then um, call as needed. Finding out the costs on that, costs, labor and equipment, labor and equipment. And then just get a, I'm going to get a temperature too um, with the <coughs> resident companies. Okay. Thank um, you. On how I'm sure that they'd all be very supportive. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Thank you. Can I ask you one question? Because sure. you mentioned about the um, handicap seating that you're getting. Mm -hmm. Handicap seating. Uh, mm -hmm. A couple of years ago, I had gotten a complaint from um, someone who was using a wheelchair, mm -hmm. um, and when I called to find out like where that person, you know, that person had a complaint that they weren't put somewhere where they could really see the performance. But what I had found out from whoever was there at the time, um, that there are certain areas in the row that were kept maybe eight, down there. There are eight they, seats down front and yeah. um, about two, four, four seats in the back. Right. And mm -hmm. so staff would know that those are 
where yes and we actually it, have um, six reserved uh, companion seats on the outside yeah. 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 So that's how we do it at the moment we don't mm -hmm. have leveled you know platform mm -hmm. seating what we what we're using right now are the outside of the aisles in the front um, there are four spaces uh, house left and four spaces house right and then in the back of the um, audit the orchestra section there are another two on each side mm -hmm. with we companion were, seats I think Patty if you can recall when Gaytown and I we went to um, there was a function going on at the Academy and we were upstairs because the place was packed you could not even sit and she's disabled we ended up upstairs mm. okay coming down mm -hmm. Tons of people, tons mm -hmm. of people. There was a rail. I remember right. that. Oh, yes. Mm. And it was yes. cut right off. Yeah, you came down ended. the stairs, and there was nothing to hold on, and she went flying. Mm. I remember that. Yeah. And I mean, she got hurt. Yeah, Tom, Tom Douglas is, you know, taking has taken a look at that um, and eventually yeah we would like to extend the railing what we try to do right now is uh, for latecomers is um, especially if we're expecting a, uh, a full house mm -hmm. is to we do rope off on house left two rows for latecomers that um, you mm -hmm. know that cannot climb stairs right. so when we continue to do that that's just mm -hmm. a you know a, a usual routine for us mm -hmm. um, but if they're really late, if the show's already started, yeah, right, then we pull. <coughs> and that's, you know, we have to open up the seats yeah. for everybody. Well, well they, they were start, excellent so. at the academy when she got hurt. There was a doctor there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we also call an ambulance whether somebody wants uh, one or uh, not. Right. Because we're a city yeah, building. Of course. <laughs> when Tony Patillo was the uh -huh. department, building inspector okay uh, he went over there and they did add on another piece deborah they that did yeah because they're scrolled at the end yes. so and we would actually have to go through mass historic to get no. permission to they did because of it being a safety <laughs> issue yeah i mean just yeah. like with what just happened recently yeah with the uh help me out the back building stairs outside Oh, the fire escapes. The fire so escapes. the fire escapes are actually that getting replaced this exactly. year through capital um, funds. That would have been a city. disaster. <laughs> I know. I know. So. Um, well, thank you for. Uh, yes, yeah, so we do. Yes, yeah, so they do keep coming. me busy there. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. When do you think it will be good when you come to the next <clears throat> meeting? I don't want to rush you, but um, give us a month or something. Yes. Like a month um, that you might choose. We have. Um, Jamie coming in May. Yeah, but I'm not talking that quick. Oh, no, I was going to say, we already have a speaker. Um, let's see. Right now in June, so I'm going to say I can probably what have this information in. When do you meet? Do you have a regular meeting day? The third Tuesday of the month at this time. So one, two. I can make June 8th. Is it June 18th would be the next June, one? June 18th. Okay, why don't you, how's that, Tori? Sounds great. We'll uh, be happy to we can get a meet with you then. The I'll be on vacation. I'll go too. <laughs> I'll, be just, I'll be just getting back. <laughs> no, we'll you can be here in need. spirit. We'll miss you, but. Uh, maybe I'll Skype. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That way it gives you enough of time to play around. Thank you so much. Thank and you. we can possibly find out, like I said, where Jamie Parent coming Fun next day. month. You know. Yeah. So that's, you know, probably the biggest obstacle are the funding sources. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, figuring out the logistics of all of this is probably going to be a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. Thank you so thank much you for having me. Thank, thank you for everything you do over there. Oh, thank you for having me. My, yeah. My bye bye. Thank you. Okay, well, we have five minutes. Um, <laughs> so, um, the next agenda item that we're up to, which I think would probably be
pretty quick um, is an update on the HP finds in the mm -hmm. revolving account. And I think that would probably be you. Yep, there it is. Um, so previously, a couple of times people have been sent what the um, actual uh, ordinance is in terms of our revolving fund, uh, which comes from handicapped parking fines. So one of the good things is we have money that we can use. The bad thing is that people are violating handicapped parking spaces. Oh, so, you know, are. you get something good out of something that's bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. Currently, um, one of the ironies in life. <laughs> we, uh, according to the ordinance, um, we cannot exceed spending $7,000, um, which, you know, you hope you have even seven thousand dollars in the account mm -hmm. yeah we, we currently have a balance because we have not yet spent any of this money mm -hmm. but um previously this discussion about uh, the uh, audio system in here um, currently our balance <coughs> is ten thousand two hundred dollars <coughs> good and keep in mind we started off with six hundred dollars patty did for your budget Original, original, and yeah. then it yeah. dropped down to 300 correct 400. 400 and I said to Patty have you found out from Susan Wright what our total is I called Susan she emailed it to me and emailed it to Patty that's mm -hmm. facts that's what we have yeah. and then when I was at the district attorney's office I was amazed I looked at all the parking spaces on Main Street not the one had a handicap plate or a Packard. Mm. Yep. I looked and said, here's more money. So maybe we need to raise the fee. You know, well, If people Patty, are parking, I mean, it's good for us to have 10 grand, which is kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could do some really cool stuff with Patty's that. Patty's got a very good idea she brought to my attention. I mentioned that, Patty. Um, I was in We go Falmouth. shopping? No. <laughs> in Falmouth, and I just happened to be talking to this gentleman who is part of, and I don't want to say necessarily triad, but mm -hmm. they have a group of people who have been trained um, to go out and issue civilian tickets to those people who are violating handicap parking. Oh, so wow. they can actually put a ticket on a vehicle because they're walking by us or going grocery shopping and can see a, a vehicle that ha is in violation in a handicapped parking that's space. That's an awesome idea. Yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. I like I love that. It. So yeah. I, I told Councilor Labarge I would check um, into it more. This was a number of years ago, and um, I... You know, I haven't. So this is on private property. Yeah. So if this person is on Main Street in Falmouth, they can. Um, <coughs> well, that's public property there, but they would they can issue a ticket. But like at but, Stop and Shop? No, I don't oh, think. No. I, no, you this would be like in the city parking. Okay. Or Main Street. Although oh. you did find out additional information or about the private parking, parking lots, lots, which have handicapped also. Anything to do yeah. with handicap parking. Right, and that's where all this money is generated. The question uh, is, public. that's awesome. The person that would be trained, would they be paid? Or is that no, voluntary? it's a voluntary See, um, there you position. Go. There you go, Jim. Keep your busy up and down Main Street. To say something, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> Who was it, Sam? What, did you just volunteer me to do it, Marianne? Thank yes. You. <laughs> I'm sitting at the teapot. That's all I want, right tickets. Right? And they'll be so really happy to see me placing that ticket on there. Oh, there's no policy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sam, did you, you know, want to say something? something to look at here. That day, we could have made mm. quite a bit of money. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if if I don't put the ticket on my windshield that time, they're pretty good. I, I If I go 15 minutes over, they're catching me. So aren't they catching... The people in the handicapped spaces. I think. I think what's happening is this would just be an extra help, right? Because they have to go ahead and do one section, then another section, right. and whatever. Okay. So by the time they come back, You're but right, I already told the mayor's office of yeah. what I saw I mean, on Main Street because we had the um, thing right, can we? The, um, yeah. for the children. <laughs> throughout the state of Massachusetts on abuse going on in front of the courthouse or the side. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't believe it when I walked up there. I said, look at this. Yeah, there's one thing I do on And somebody oh, told me it okay. goes on a lot. And this is the highest mm -hmm. that we've ever, ever had in this account, if 
Eugene and I did not do that ordinance. This money would never be there. Right. Well, but as Miriam mentioned, a piece right. of history. We originally, when I first started, we had six hundred dollars for committee on disabilities. Then it was cut to four hundred. Oh, I remember. Then it was just a limit. We, we, we were looking at like. Should we reprint the brochures? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so this is this is definitely an idea to explore. Um, I'm just mindful of the time, so I want to um, wrap up shortly. Um, I'm wondering this. So um, this, some of these new business things, I'm thinking that we can hold for next time, um, especially since we yeah. don't have too many people here today. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. But you said you had something you wanted to well, mention? Well, um, I just wanted to, Forbes Library, I had talked to Russ Carrier. Oh, you want to do the Forbes Library? Yeah, I, I would like to because uh, okay. we we'll were supposed to do this in, in March. And they're starting a capital campaign to put in a new elevator. Mm -hmm. And so because we've dealt with them with the problems they had with the chairlift and getting that all going. Um, and because of what part of our purpose is, would we want to support um, their capital campaign by saying this is a great project, um, it should be done. The Commission on Disabilities, uh, you know, supports this project. Oh, definitely. Which, which yes. yeah, would, I that. would help, I think, the, the yes. cause. Yes. So I think That's if we just did, to me. Uh, we can't vote, important but if, you, if there's a consensus, you could do that. Does anyone Who's not? Gonna write, are you going to write it up, Patty? Yeah, I can write it up. And just okay. tell Does that. anyone not want to do that? Cool. Okay. So we, we all want to do yeah, it. Yeah, I think, unless we're given them money, I think we can unless strongly support the idea the of accessibility. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think we should definitely support the project. strongly support the project. Thank you. Yeah. All right. And Patty, why don't you do a quick one? Because you should do that. Oh, the mention public. about that. Yeah. Oh, the, oh, yeah. See, I'm sorry. Just, yeah, I just want to, if, if I could just be recognized for a minute, um, Sure. Go back to yes. the previous topic. Um, I'm on the new parking committee. It's only met one time. And I just wanted to, I know that there's no formal liaison at, yet, right. but I just wanted to throw out there that in our first meeting, what we talked about was really getting some focus on, on topics and some education mm -hmm. as to how to move forward. Mm -hmm. So we have, our next meeting happens to be this week. Oh. Um, I think it's this week. Um, but the, 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 we need, some things to really focus on and first we need the education so we're going to find out about some budget and the money and um, the inventory of spaces and that kind of stuff but I mm -hmm. certainly as a uh, hopeful member of this committee mm -hmm. and as a handicapped person myself who, mm -hmm. who uh, sometimes avails himself of handicapped parking and, mm -hmm. and, and has the challenges um, I think it might be a good idea for this committee to Communicate to the parking committee some of the concerns so we can start looking oh, at some great Okay, idea. thank you. The that's Patty and I idea. have already talked, Sam, because we don't have enough of members tonight to vote on it. I've already emailed Owen Freeman Daniels, okay, in regards to an liaison from this committee. So we're going to wait till next month. That way, whoever on this committee would like to be part of that committee. They would be a, a liaison, they will not be a voting member, but they will bring issues to that committee also. So we were hoping to do it today, but we could not. And we do have one member who I think is quite interested in doing it. Okay. That would be good. So that's great, thank you. So, so just quickly, um, Councilor Bridge passed me this about Law Day, and I sent everybody information about this, either through the mail or electronically, mm -hmm. that the um, Hampshire County Law Day 2013 is um, being held um, here in Northampton. Uh, there will be the, it's the 150th anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation, which I know Councilor LaBarge brought that beautiful document I think mm -hmm. back in January. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you're interested, uh, there's a name and a number to contact. And uh, everybody should have already received this information. But if you need it again, I can uh, email it to you again. And you do have Thank the RSVP you. Yeah. because they so, serve like, you know, yeah. okay. breakfast rolls and Thank stuff like that. that. Thank you. It's going to be a busy day. 
So, so whatever we didn't cover here, I'll put on the agenda for We will uh, cover um, next time. All right. All right. Um, thank you all for coming. Do we need a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion Second. to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay. Bye, everyone. Seconded. Bye, honey. <laughs> <laughs>